So as we just listen to that many stories, who we remember of our loved ones, what they did, who they are, we might wonder in our mind, how could they do that? How could they become heroes of their time, doing things that's remarkable, memorable, and give blessings beyond what a normal person would be able to. I think that one answer will be this, because that they knew deep in their heart they are a child of the king. They are the child of the king. That in this world, the, how, who, which family they were brought, brought into in this world, what their social status are, their age, their gender, race or gender, does not change that one identity that they cherished, which is they are the child of a king. This new identity, this new understanding of who they are, creates a new person from inside out. I was planning to do a story, but given that how many stories being already told, I will skip. To make the point, you already already helped me making the point, <laughs> so I don't need my story to come to the point I'm trying to make. We're jumping to the second slide. We are all adopted to be God's children. Yes, if it's by birth order, only Jesus Christ is the Son. But as the Holy Spirit poured down, as the Holy Spirit enters in all of us the moment we confess Christ is the Lord our Savior, we are sealed. We are sealed as God's children. The Holy Spirit is the seal testifying that we have a new identity which is a child of God. This new identity, this new adoption that comes within the Holy, after the Holy Spirit poured down in all of God's children, this new identity brings about by the adoption and it brings up about new privileges and new responsibilities as God children. New identity. This new identity defined us who we are. This new identity, sometimes this world may ignore. They may not recognize how precious we are in God's eyes, what privileged life we're living, and why we can do things that we are doing. But this new identity is so real in the spiritual realm because everyone who has a spiritual eyes can see it and the, the heavenly angels know it because this spirit in us is undeniable fact that even our naked eyes cannot see but the spiritual beings see it so true. You know, all the spirit know who is God and know who is real God's children by identifying them with the Holy Spirit inside. I was told a story by one of the a Christian, we call her Aunt, who uh, helped uh, lead me to Christ. She testified that one day she really prayed to God, like, God, show me, is it really true that I am your children? Really, how, what is that mark that you say that the Holy Spirit gave? So she prayed. She really wanted affirmation when she was young children, was young, um, young believer. 
So that one day, she said, as I was walking on the street, and I see the buses coming on the street, people coming in, out, and coming onto the bus, and I was still thinking about my prayer, and all of a sudden, my eyes were opened, and I see in some people, there are bigger lights, bright lights inside, and some small light, and some do not have the light. And then uh, I, the idea come to me, that light is the Holy Spirit. Because that's how the spiritual beings see this world. People without light, who are not believers. People with light, small lights, new believers. And people with lots of lights, those who are full of the Spirit, filled by the Holy Spirit. So she all of a sudden knew there is this reality, this spiritual reality that this world often ignores, do not know, but with a spiritual eye we can perceive and we understand it so fully is that we are different. In God's world, in the king's kingdom, we are the children of God. We are God's children the moment the Holy Spirit, Spirit dwell within. And we are adopted as the children of the Most High King. As the children of the Most High King, as Paul said, comes with privileges. The privileges are, according to Paul's word, there's no fear of condemnation. Because before that, people in the Jew Jewish people live under laws. They worry about when they are not be able to measure up to what the law required them to do. So they're in fear, living in fear of condemnation, of punishments, of living in fear of not good enough. But with this new identity, they now giving the title children of God, and now Christ has paid for everything of all the punishment that due to mankind then they were able to live a free life, a brave life, a fearless life. They do not have to worry about punishment because they can always call upon the Father, the Appa Father, for deliverance and for protection. And not only that, they are now the heirs of the Abba Father's kingdom, giving the riches of God, the whole universe created in his hand, all the treasures on this mountain, all everything in the ground belongs to our Father, and all the glory and adoration goes to our Father, and we are heirs of the Father's kingdom just like Christ as an heir of the Father, who is the first fruit going back to the Father from this world. With this new identity, there's also responsibilities. Paul mentioned in verse 17, now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. The stories you just told is not all of a, like a smooth ride of life. There are sufferings in this world, 
as you shared. There is troubles in this daily living, and there are sufferings. But all those people, the heroes in our life, was able to live beyond the difficulties of their time, of their lives, because they know that they have the responsibilities of, as the child of the king, they have responsibilities just like Christ. Because Jesus Christ didn't enter this world to have a smooth ride, to be liked, to be adored, to be hailed as the king in this world, but he came to this world to redeem. He suffered like a slave, and he paid the price on the cross, and he redeemed others so that all of us. Can have a worry-free life in the spiritual world. This new identity come with new privileges and a new responsibility. And this new responsibility enabled us to go and above that was happening in our life. And do something miraculous. Many missionaries serving in a country where Christianity is persecuted is a, another extreme. Mother Teresa, one another ex example, serving in the poorest region in India. Is another. One per quote, a life not lived for others is not a life. That is the calling that she has, as a responsible daughter of the highest king. She founded those missionaries of charity at age eighteen. In India, he founded this organization to help those who are dying of AIDS, leprosy, tuberculosis, and every other things. When pe when people were got thrown into the street, she will pick them back up, bring them in the shelter, wash them carefully, so say prayers. So to give them a decent closure in life, there are four vows that they take in this charity: chastity, living careful in, in observe, uh, to observe uh, what God has taught; poverty, riches is not what they seek; obedience to Christ, obedience, and finally. Wholehearted service to the poorest of the poor. So this is what she said: "A life not lived for others is not a life at all." That is what the mentality of a person who has a new identity has, because they understand this new responsibility from the Father in heaven, just as Christ has set the example for us all. Came into this world to serve. This new identity gave us the, assur the assurance, the urge to go for Christ, to like, be like Christ, and to go into this world to be a blessing to others. We may not be able to do big things, but we can all do small things. Like Mother Teresa also said, not everyone of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. That great love of God, that great sacrificial love of Christ, is what we can do. Knowing that we are a child of the King, knowing that we 
have the inheritance in heaven, knowing that we are protected and blessed by our upper Father in heaven. We should go out with a new responsibility into the messiness of this world, into the messiness of other people's lives. If they allow, be friend with them to deliver the light, no matter how small it is, to their lives. Be friend with those who are friendless, who could not have a friend. And bring God's love to their lives. That is the calling. That is our Father's expectation for us all. With this new identity, come with new privileges and the new responsibilities that He expects all of us to live by. So, brothers and sisters, be assured. That the Holy Spirit has already marked you out as a child of the King. Be assured that you have the glorious inheritance in heaven, and be bold enough to take on the responsibilities, even sufferings, to live a life for others. Let's pray. Dear God, our Abba in, Abba in heaven, we know that you have given us all a new identity. We are the precious sons and daughters of yours. We are the children of the Most High King, Lord. Even sometimes we forget about that fact. But help us to know that we are truly the precious, the treasured ones in your eyes. Lord, help us to know that you love us deeply beyond what we understand, and you have given us inheritance in your glorious kingdom that's coming to this world in, when the new heaven and the new earth comes. Lord, with that assurance, help us to be ready to enter into this world, to suffer like Christ, to live a life for others, and to deliver, bring more of your children back to your loving embrace. We thank you, Lord. May the Holy Spirit encourage us daily. May the Holy Spirit empower us daily, and may the Holy Spirit give us the wisdom from above to be that light and the salt in this place and in this time. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Yes, we are a child of the king.